They call us the MBA authors, okay, but sitting in front of you, you look like three idiots. <laughs> right? The three MBA authors don't need a moderator. First of all, thank you for attending our session here in Agra. It's a, it's a, it's a fabulous feeling being in this, in this wonderful city. Uh, this is the second time for me at the, at the Taj Lit Fest. I was here last time as well. Uh, and it's a very, very great feeling. We got a wonderful venue this time. So, well done, folks. And before we get going on, on, on the subject of the day, Ashwin and, and Piyush, yeah. I think the first question, first thing which most of the people around here would want to probably know uh, is MBA, a fabulous career, both of you, what made you switch careers or, or, or at least think of pursuing a parallel career and starting off of writing? Not only did you start writing, but you also became such a big success. Hmm. So, both you and Piyush, what, what, what kind of prompted you? And you, and you. What, what prompted you to start writing? Uh, it was a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> so, the learning for the day is, on your way back, get a bottle of whiskey. Any no. brand? Well, you know, as it was Hemingway who said that you should write when you're drunk and edit when you're sober. So, I think, uh, look at it Ravi, this way, the three of us are here and we don't have a moderator and just as well because probably any moderator would have a tough time dealing with three MBAs yeah. because they are so full of themselves, let's face it, you know. So I think to a certain extent there, are, there, there is that old proverb which says that those who can do and those who can't teach, probably that proverb needs a little bit of modification, uh, those who can do and those who can't write. Uh, I think in, in a lot of instances there are people uh, who have wonderful stories and ideas sitting inside of them and probably you faced it, I mean after all all the stuff that you've written has been related to the sector that you have intimately known. Uh, in my case um, it was uh, for the longest time I was born and brought up in a, in a Banya family. Uh, I. For me, uh, when I mean, I used to go to my, my dad's place of work, uh, not for any other reason, but because I was told that you must learn uh, accounting. So, you know, uh, and there was a Munimji out there who wore this uh, cap, and he would always see me with a book. And he would say, ki, Babu, ye sab aap kya kar rahe ho? if you have to read, then you read a balance sheet, not this. And uh, if you have to focus on uh, books, then do bookkeeping rather than book reading. And uh, I think there is always in your life, there is always someone uh, who makes you do, you know, achieve that transition. In my case, it was my grandfather. Uh, the, ma the man was, uh, uh, was from Kanpur. And uh, uh, in Kanpur, he had this very beautiful library. And he would send me one book every week. And he would say, Beta, isko padho. And the books were across genres. I mean, I, I remember receiving uh, autobiography of a yogi and Charles Dickens and Leo Tolstoy and I also receive, re remember receiving Lady Chatterley's Lover and Fanny Hill. I mean, so he was way ahead of his time in that sense. Uh, but what it did was it got me to read. And once that happened, then automatically it sort of took on a life of its own, you know. So I think that was where the transition for me happened. I knew Piyush. Um, well, uh, you know, uh, as you all know that uh, I've not sort of followed that conventional path of being an MBA and then turning into a writer. Actually, I became a filmmaker before I became a writer as such, right? So, um, I, I, I finished my MBA. Uh, actually, I wanted to do something creative, but coming from a middle class uh, army background, my father said, nay, 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 beta, MBA karo. So, I did an MBA and I got into advertising and I worked for four years on advertising brand strategy for large multinationals and um, then I said I have to move out from here because I can't see myself doing this for you know the rest of my life so I because I was working a lot on ad films 
uh, that was a natural step for me and I graduated from there uh, from what I learned and I started making ad films from for the agency my agency Mudra and then I became an independent ad filmmaker from there I became a feature filmmaker I wrote a script I got finance I got uh, you know uh, a, a kind of a platform to start making movies and I made three movies and then I said okay now let me see if I can write <laughs> you know so one day actually I was writing a uh, screenplay for a big star and that star had to go away uh, for shooting a movie uh, for uh, for three months in London and I couldn't communicate with him so I had to wait for him to come back so I had nothing to do so I just started writing and I wrote a short story which became longer and my wife uh, said well, no, why don't you write a couple more so I wrote a couple more and uh, uh, then she said yeah this could be a book why don't you send it out so I sent it out to publishers and I got offers and uh, within six weeks from having finished those stories uh, by the start time the star came back I was a uh, author with a three book deal <laughs> so that's how I came into oh, wow. it. In fact I'm surprised Piyush that uh, when the author when the, when the star went away for six months you didn't consider casting yourself as a star in no, the movie. three months. <laughs> you know yeah. it would have been fabulous. We yeah. would have lost a good author but you know with, with your looks. You so much more yeah time. correct. <laughs> Bollywood star power you can't, can't beat that. <laughs> okay that's it. But uh, uh, Ravi's uh, Ravi, I, I want to know about your journey. Your, your journey is very inspiring. Uh, to me at least, you know, it's been very inspiring. Well, um, we heard uh, one perspective which said that a bottle of whiskey, okay, which gets you to be an author. Uh, in my case, it was my wife going away for a month. Okay. The wives play a role. <laughs> okay, so in case if you <laughs> naughty, naughty. So yeah, yeah. MBA, naughty, naughty. wives <laughs> get married, be an MBA, <laughs> get married. I, I see that we are now heading to into naughty territory. Please, <laughs> please explain further. Uh, my wife uh, worked with Citibank at that time, and she w had gone away on a management trainee program. She was a trainer, and in those days they used to train new entrants for a month. So she was away for a month. I had a six-year-old daughter at home. I couldn't have partied, not have gone out. So I was sitting at home doing nothing. How long can you watch TV? So I started writing. I wrote some 10, 15 pages, showed it to a few friends. A few of my guys who worked for me turned around and said, Sir, you'll write a fabulous book. You write fabulous emails, so you're sure to write a good book. So then I turned around and said, Suckers. Okay. <laughs> but then finally I started writing to it. I wrote the first 10. I was a lazy guy. so the backdrop had to be the banking industry itself because that's what I knew about. So I wrote about stories based in, in the banking industry and, and completed it. A lot of it was true stories, we will not go into that right now. But the, but the bottom line is, get a glass of whiskey, <laughs> ask your wife to go away for a month and maybe if you're doing, if you're making movies, get a star, send the star away. <laughs> you will actually write fabulous books. So that's the bottom line guys. So now you know what to do when you get back home. Right. See, but when we are saying fabulous books, we are just praising our own selves. So please excuse us. It might not be that fabulous, but they, you know, it's something which we love to do. Right. The question, Ravi, also is that okay? We, we've talked about to some extent where we are, where we've come from, how this has happened. But I think what is unique is that now we have a whole generation of authors out there who are all MBAs. So what is it? in your opinion that actually makes an MBA more prone to writing? I mean is there, I've wondered, I've been asked about it but I don't have an answer so do you? You know, you know uh, Ashwin, uh, a valid point you make because today if you look at the bestseller list in this country, uh, well uh, I would love to say all, all of it is commercial fiction, it is commercial fiction. Uh, but within the commercial fiction segment, if you look at the, at the key authors in this country today, 80% of them are MBAs. I was actually comparing the popular book awards last year and this year at Crossword. Eight out of the ten guys in that list were MBAs. I looked at the Forbes celebrity shortlist of authors. Eight out of the ten in the shortlist are MBAs. So there's obviously got to be something which MBAs are doing which is right. Yeah. And I think there are two, three things here which I would like to highlight as to possible reasons. One, 
I think MBAs are extremely ambitious. Okay, they want to achieve something which nobody else has done in life. So I guess that's something which prompts them to get into it. MBAs don't think too much about their looks, unlike engineers who you know think they can become stars in Piyush's movies. So for them, becoming glamorous and Bollywood and getting that kind of a fame is very difficult. Okay, so they settled for something called intellectual glamour. Okay, <laughs> which is the next best to glamour in Bollywood. Intellectual glamour is where you are seen as intelligent and glamorous at the same time. Media talks about you, and writing is probably one of the means to achieve it. Okay. And three, most importantly, I think what's happening is people like Chetan Bhagat, Amish, yourself, all are becoming poster boys of the Indian literary scene. And all of you are MBAs. So the hundreds and thousands of MBA graduates out there look at these poster boys and say, okay, if they can do it, I can also do it. Which and is drawing more. Which is actually drawing more and more people from the uh, pack into, into writing. I think. These are broadly the reasons. Unless, uh, yes, uh, uh, yeah, I have a small point to add. Uh, you know, the, the the process of doing an MBA uh, also opens you up uh, in a in a in a way to taking abstract thoughts and presenting them in a easily uh, you know accessible manner for the person who's reading that. Right? We we are we are taught to marshal our thoughts around a, around a concept and present it. We're making presentations all the time, etc. So I think that kind of gives us a, 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 a way into being able to, you know, take these ideas and concepts and put them out there on paper, perhaps easier than others. I, I, I feel... No, I would agree with you, yeah. because there is a process. Yeah. And in, in my own instance, I would say that adding to what you and Ravi have just said, yeah. I think there are two more issues mm. which uh, make it a little easier for someone with a management background. A, if you really notice, going back to what Ravi talked about, the bestseller list, yeah. and the fact that 8 out of 10 are MBAs, probably it's also true that MBA authors tend to get their hands dirty much more often in terms of marketing and sales. Absolutely, that's true. Yeah. Uh, because that's the background that they yeah. come from. True, true. So to that extent, they, their process doesn't end with writing a book. Yeah. It also sort of All the transcends, way through, yeah. it morphs into the yeah. process of sales and marketing. And I think the second part of it is that anyone who's running a parallel career, like yeah. for example, me or Ravi or for that matter you, yeah. I think the, you have to be very disciplined about your writing process. Very true. And to that extent, I think that little bit of corporate culture helps you in terms of pacing yourself, planning yourself, uh, time, management. Figure, time yeah, management. So all of that to some extent is also helpful. I think, I think what you said, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, MBAs tend to get their hands dirty. MBAs are a little bit shameless. Okay. They don't really uh, think twice before standing in a crowd and saying, hey guys, buy my book. Okay, I was actually in a, on, on a forum with uh, one, of, one of the literary authors who writes from the 70s and uh, we had a huge debate. This was a session at IM Bangalore where we were talking about how to write your first book. Yeah. And she said that an author's job is to write a book and give it to the publisher and forget about it. The publisher has to sell. Yeah. Okay, I turned around and said, ma'am, that... Uh, it begins uh, over there. It, it, <laughs> uh, author's job actually begins once he's written a book because you have to go and sell a book. Now, Ashwin, you have been fabulous in marketing your book all over. See, just okay. one point and I wanted to make Ravi over there, just before you move on to that. One thing I noticed about the MBA author versus the non-MBA author, let's say, right. okay, is that we are all writing commercial fiction or com even non-fiction, but very uh, accessible, easily readable, commercial, uh, popular in the popular genre. You know, we are not writing literary fiction. So I think because of that training, also we are sort of move move easily towards writing the kind of books which we feel will be accepted more popular. Uh, uh, have to this as a what alternate you, career. How right? do you market your books? How do you decide on what to market, where to sell your books, uh, what kind of promotion activities you do? Do you think your MBA degree has actually helped you in, in doing that? Absolutely. I mean, you know, because because of the fact that I'm a a marketing MBA and I'm an advertising strategist by training and by practice, it was uh, it, for me it was like 
second nature to kind of think about how the book is going to come including things like my cover what should be my cover like you know starting from there onwards all the way to how it should be positioned in the in the in the bookshop how it should appear on online sales and what time when when should the you know at promotions etc start what kind of a promo to present etc 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 yeah ashwin uh, we learned a lot from from you in fact uh, on my god that's on, scary on social oh, media yeah. sure. and on how to promote one's book so where did you where do you pick up all these skills from i must tell you uh, initially when i started out ravi i wasn't really you know i was i was a babe in the woods in that sense so it, the reality is that i hadn't the faintest notion of what was expected of me one always came into this world thinking that your job is to write and then after that the publisher takes over but the honest truth is that that's really not the way it works you are ultimately the best brand for your own writing um and i learned a lesson early on when i started visiting bookstores when i was just a self published author i didn't have a pub publisher to start with and uh, i would write to newspapers and magazines and say listen will you please uh, read my book and i don't mind whether you give a bad review or a good review but will you just review it and no one wanted to even talk to me uh, so what i started doing was i started reaching out to bloggers people who wrote about books on their websites and every day i would send out a certain number of books to them and i would say listen i'm sending you a complimentary book all i request from you is please review it that automatically got me linked into this entire social media scene mm. the other important thing was that when i did get published eventually in india which was in 2008 uh, i realized that it wasn't good enough to be published because when you walk into a bookstore there are thousands of books out there so simply if there is and and there was one gentleman from the industry who made a very interesting comment he said aap yaad rakhiyega jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai and i said my god jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai that was like almost like a eye opener of sorts and i must admit uh, during those struggle times uh any city that i visited i would always go to the local bookstores and very often i would go unannounced and i can also promise you there was one embarrassing moment when i was actually caught picking up the books from a back shelf and putting them on the front shelf <laughs> uh because i found five of my books but they were lying somewhere in the corner and i i said no this is not this is it not work really hurts no <laughs> it really hurts so i just picked them up and i brought them to the front and uh, uh i i was i was reprimanded uh, at that point of time but i think what the word you used shamelessness i think at the end of the day if you want to sell there has to be an element of shamelessness uh, you have to be uh, a little for lack of a better word besharam in order to be able to actually market yourself um that's very important i would say that's the starting point of the marketing strategy really as it were ravi but i want to say something which i learned from you i don't i have not told you this before but i learned this from you and it's it's something because of your background and the mba background which i then took on so um we both were invited to a bookshop for uh the crossword book for a book contest and at that time i was talking to ravi and i was saying you know i don't know how many books where it's selling etc etc i don't know and ravi said let's go and he took me to the crossword uh counter and he asked that person show me your computer and he went into the computer and he saw show all the tracking figures which are acceptable and he says see these are the tracking figures this is how it's selling etc 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 i said wow and so he said yeah i do this on a regular basis I said you have been doing this regularly I said yeah so I learned that and now I do that also you know uh, important thing so is that we track no no I just had to say that monitoring your sales knowing which city what sells is very important because if there is some market where books are not moving it's necessary to go and do an event there so that people get to know you people get to absolutely uh, you know yeah. uh, read about you and pick up your book so it, it's it's like selling any other product exactly exactly
Yeah, so, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, kudos to the MBA authors. Uh, well, the doctors are not doing bad themselves. <laughs> uh, being a surgeon myself, I must say Khalid Husseini and you know the emperor of, of maladies and everything. So, uh, two th points I want to make. One, when I read an English book written by an Indian author, I feel I am reading English thought in Hindi which is kind of disappointing that the flow is thought of or plotted in Hindi and is somehow on the paper in English. The second point I want to make for any budding writer out here, some of us may be, uh, what should be your first book? One which fo you follow which is in you, which resides in you, you should follow your heart or you should follow the diktats of the market. I think no, Ajay no, Mago no, is no. also sitting here. So what? No. Sh how should it be? Like you guys, what? Why I say you are successful is perhaps you understand the demand and supply thing. Being in MBA. No, no, no. Just I kidding. Just okay. Any? Was the question direct with any particular individual or any of us? You wanna go? I'll take the second question first. I, I'll take. The, you have you read? Have question. you read a Ravi Subramanian book or a Ashwin Sanghi book? Yeah, and Ashwin Sanghi book because then you would uh, you would see that there none of them are Hindi thought out thought out in Hindi. They are English thinkers books who are writing and thinking in English. No, I, I, I just want to ask a a question again. Okay, for a minute, assuming that what you're saying is right, what's wrong? You, you know, you need to put down on paper what you are comfortable. You think in English, you, Hindi, Latvian, Tamil, Marathi, Punjabi, I care a damn. As long as what you are writing in English makes sense, it's a good story, and you hold the audience engaged. That's all I care for. Uh, taking back, taking off from what Ravi just said, uh, let, let me uh, just say this, that I believe that I have never thought of myself as a writer. A lot of people say, what does it take to be a writer? I am not a writer. At the end of the day, what we all are uh, is a storyteller. Ultimately, you can tell a story or you can't tell a story. And it doesn't matter in what language you really think. Uh, I have, uh, if you think about it, in our own country, uh, the, the earliest that we had a writing script was Brahmi, uh, which was around the 3rd century BC. So you are talking 2300 odd years ago. But our stories go back 5,000 years and 6,000 years. So for the longest time, we had stories without a written tradition. That is the wealth that we have in our country. So it is not necessary. I think the reason why you find a large number of younger and newer authors becoming successful is because they don't think of themselves as writers and instead just concentrate on the story. So it doesn't matter whether they use a larger word or a smaller word, whether the sentence structure is very complex or not, uh, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the story should move you. The biggest compliment that you can get is, you know, listen, I had to stay up till 3 o'clock in order to finish that story. That, that to my mind, and, is critical. And you know, if the story is good, Shivani, all the others become, you know, frivolous. All the other things start taking center stage once your story collapses. So, story first, language which you think in is entirely up to your comfort. Yeah. So no issues in that. And also your second question by the way, which is in terms of whether you write the book which is inside you or whether you should write the book which you think the market will, uh, will like. Uh, honestly, I must tell you that while you are writing, put on your writing cap your storytelling cap and don't worry about the market because if you do that Absolutely. you will be true to yourself you will be true to your readers you will be true to your story moment you start thinking about the marketing but yes once you're done with writing take off the writer's cap forget about it and become a bunya once again <laughs> I, actually you know what the thing is that uh, if you write what you love or what you believe in you will really write the best possible that you can write. If you're writing for somebody else or trying to please somebody else, you will, yeah. you know, write things which you might not be happy with. And then one day you might turn around and say, Ye kya likha maine? You know, so always write for your own self. I write the kind of books that I would love to read. 
you know so that's it yeah Lady. Uh, uh, oh, no no please my, my one question, question there, from yeah. here please last please. time we were not able to accommodate yeah, him so uh, I that lady wanted to ask a question you yeah, asking yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay asking. I, okay you are mba writers right. my one question is what you will suggest to the ordinary writer to uh, market their books in simple words so that uh, you said jo dikhta hai bikhta hai you are doing so many exercises to sell your books uh, but what is the general concept so that an ordinary man who writes something uh, he can uh, produce it into the market please Ashwin, I think you would be with them. Okay. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, when I had started out at that point of time, this is now 2006, I went into a situation where I couldn't find myself any publisher at all. And so I went through that one or two years where I was searching for a publisher and I had to become my own marketer. I had to do all my marketing and sales completely on my own. There was no publisher in the picture. At that point of time, the one thing that I realized is that in today's world, the power equation has changed. There was a time when you as an author, the only way that you could be known was if you had the right connections either with the publishers or with the book retail industry or with the newspapers and the magazines and the journals. Today, actually, we have allowed the world to become a lot more democratic. So, for example, you have uh, first-time authors who are self-published, who suddenly sell in the millions. Yeah. Uh, you also have a situation where today, if you are simply very disciplined and very active about blogging, about Twitter, about Facebook, about social media, honestly, the truth is you don't need, even need to depend on newspapers and magazines anymore in order to get your visibility. So I think the point I'm trying to make is that today, the entire landscape is much more in favor of you. Only two things which I think are important to keep in mind. Everyone thinks that, oh, you know, X, Y, Z was a self-published author. He or she became successful. And so therefore I can do it. That's a great positive thinking. The odds are stacked against you because, I mean, last year, Google did a study to find out how many books are there in the world. They found 129 million. In addition to that, every year about 10 to 15 million books get added, including the self-publishing world. The scary statistic is that a self-published title will sell 57 books during its lifetime. That is a worry, because at the end of the day, the odds of you making it are extremely low. The second thing is attention span. So for example, Ravi and uh, Piyush talked about the book cover. Uh, the truth is that in a study done in the US two years ago, they found that the average book browser spends 8 seconds on the front cover and exactly 13 seconds on the rear cover, on the blurb. You have to grab his attention. So I would say in, at the end of the day, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. There's a lot of stuff that you should do. Ultimately at the end of the day, all of that is one part of it. But you know, sorry, I'm going to take one minute more. There's an old story about a good old friend of my dad's who used to come home every evening and used to have a couple of whiskeys with my dad. And he would say after a couple of whiskeys, he would say, Beta, in life, 99% is about good luck. So I would say, but uncle, wo baki jo ek taka hai, wo kya hai? what is that 1%? And he'd say, that is known as bloody good luck. <laughs> and let me tell you, that bloody good luck factor is something that we cannot control. <laughs> That's why he was talking about whiskey, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we have the last question coming up because, you know, that we are all ready for the next session. Yeah, I just wanted to say I haven't read uh, your books. So, this is not being personal. But at the same time, I would like to agree with this lady who put that question to you. And that is that the story is important, yes. But also when a reader like me takes, picks up a book, I also want to enjoy the language. Correct. For me, it's equally important, you know, so I don't entirely agree with all of you when you say that, you know, you can think in any language provided the story is gripping. The story has to be gripping, but the language also plays a huge, huge part in the enjoyment of the book. Okay, I will, I will, I will answer the question. Um, Ma'am, there are various kinds of authors in this world and there are various kinds of readers in this world. So you have people who enjoy good language, 
the people who enjoy good story, the people who enjoy easy language. Today what's happening is the world, the way it's changing, span of control is limited, time at the disposal of people is limited and hence people need something which is a quick read and hence authors also adapting to that kind of a taste. There was a time when Enid Blyton was the world's number one selling book. Today it's not even there in the top 10. Why? Reading habits have changed. So I think while nobody says that writing can take a walk, writing needs to be good, okay, there needs to be a certain basic level of writing beyond which it doesn't make sense. Beyond, if you aren't even write that level, it doesn't make sense. So your writing needs to be good, your story needs to be good, but writing needs to be in tune with the time of today. Thank you very much. This is where we Thank close you. the session on the MBA Writers